Should you buy an AMD Ryzen laptop or an Intel laptop right now? I mean, look at all these different choices and processors. How do you even understand which one to choose? How do you demystify all these letters and numbers and gibberish? Well, that's what this video was made for. That's what we're gonna solve for you right now. My name is Benji Kaiser. You're watching Don't Tech With Me. Let's dive in. Okay, so AMD versus Intel. That's what we're looking at right now. And to set the scene, I'm gonna say that Intel has gotten uncomfortably comfortable on top of their throne of the laptop scene over the past 15 to 20 years. We're gonna talk about this. I'm gonna look at my notes here because I don't wanna miss anything, but we're gonna talk about what's happened over the past 20 years, uh, 15 specifically, and how Intel has gotten comfortable. The first MacBook Pro I ever owned was a 2010 MacBook Pro. It had an Intel i7 M620 processor in it. Okay, that was the first laptop I owned. It was fantastic for graphic design. Um, it was able to handle Photoshop, InDesign and Illustrator, but usually separately. I couldn't really run them all at the same time. It still wasn't as powerful as I needed it to be. And then I went up and got an upgrade in 2015. I got a new MacBook Pro. I got an i7 4980HQ processor in that MacBook Pro. Now between my 2010 in 2015 MacBook Pro, I saw a 197% increase in performance. Then come 2020, we now have the current MacBook Pro 16, okay? That is the 2020 MacBook Pro 16. It comes with the latest Intel i7 9750H processor. And we saw a 114% increase in power between 2015 and 2020. Now my question is, what gives Intel? Why did we see such a huge increase between the M620 and the 4980, but then between the 4980 and the 9750, we lost 80% of increase in performance between those two? I'm just I'm wondering what happened. Now, if we compare that to one of the latest Ryzen R7 processors, um, the latest Ryzen 7 processor is only 5% better performance than a 2015 Intel processor in a MacBook Pro. So you see there where, yes, Ryzen is making some big changes and really starting to bring itself up to the forefront of laptop processors, but they're still at a performance level of 2015. So that's what we're gonna continue to talk about in this video. Intel is still currently winning. Now, they've just released their 4000 series. We just saw the Ryzen 9 4900H hit the market, HS, and it really got close to taking over the i7-9750H, but it didn't quite do it. Okay, so that's where we're sitting right now. Now, all of a sudden, after all these years, AMD walks in, right? That's where we're at. We're at 2020. AMD walked on the scene in 2017 into the laptop category. They were sitting around, not sitting around, they were causing a ruckus in the desktop and gaming workstation category. They came in guns ablazing. And then you know, you know what? They've taken over, in my opinion. They got better pricing. They got more performance. I can't wait to see what they do this year. It's, it's going to be bonkers. But anyway, they took over the gaming sector. Now they're setting their sights on laptops and Intel better watch out. But currently, right now, it's a pretty hot competition. So, okay. So they took a seat at the table inside of the desktop processor category. And why did they do this? Well, the processors were easier to cool. They were uh, less complicated to integrate into desktops. You know, you just kind of put them in. The desktops are really big. They got big boxes. It's not a huge complicated mess. Where the laptop processors, you got to work with the brand. You got to get them in the processor, you get them in the laptop, so on and so forth. Um, they're going to be more flexibility in desktops and be faster releases because gamers and people who build workstations are super excited. They're always ready to upgrade to the newest components. Um, and gamers and desktop builders are really early adopters as a whole. It takes a little bit more time for somebody who buys a laptop because we're not as studied. We're not as focused usually when we go to buy laptops. We're less informed often. Well, that's not, you're not, you're, you're not less informed because you're watching this video, but normally laptop connoisseurs are a little bit less informed than say a gaming uh, a gaming individual or somebody who's building their own workstations. So now that AMD has proven themselves by taking over the gaming sector, they've now turned their sights towards the laptop sector. In 2017, they launched their first lineup. They had the Ryzen 5 2700U, the Ryzen 7 2700U, and the Ryzen 7 2700, which I've only actually found in the Acer Predator Helios 500. But those are their first three processors that hit the market. Now, the first challenge uh, that Ryzen set themselves on course was to beat out um, the Intel i7-7500U. And they tried to do this with the Ryzen 7 2700U. 
they succeeded. They were able to beat out that processor by 11% greater performance. Uh, roughly a year later, they released their 3000 series. Now, this processor lineup continued to turn heads of, on a lower budget, but they did not really start to make their sights towards a high-end laptop category until this year when they released their 4000 series or announced their 4000 series lineup. So the Ryzen 3200U barely was on par with the i3 processor when it released. The Ryzen 5 3200U was beaten out by most i5U processors from Intel. So, okay, let's just kind of clear the air real quick. If you want to know where all of these processors rank uh, in the lineup of Intel versus Ryzen, I've created a Google Sheet that takes them from from descending to ascending order, and you can see exactly where all these processors fall in. So you can kind of follow along with me and understand what I'm talking about. So go down in the description below, click that link, and you'll be able to follow along and understand where all these different processors rank, how much they cost, how many cores they have, and the laptops that are associated with them. So that's a super helpful re resource that I've put up for you guys. You should definitely check out. I should have told you that earlier in the video. All right, so from there, Ryzen 7 barely inched past the i7 mobile series competition. But then Intel came out, released their latest processors, and took them back over this past year. So it's this back and forth with Ryzen and Intel for the budget, more low and medium range categories. Ryzen is a great laptop for the $400 to $800 range. Um, and many graphic designers and video editors and photographers who subscribe to my channel, that's a lot, that's a lot of times their budget. And so they're trying to find the processor or you're trying to find the processor that fits into your budget. And that's why I want you to grab that Google sheet um, because it'll see where all these processors align and the budget that they fit into. Okay. So if Ryzen wants to make a mark in the laptop market, they have to improve their offering to start attacking the higher end market because that's where, you know, you're looking at 4K video editing becoming very prevalent, You're looking at running multiple design programs at the same time. So it's very important that Ryzen continues to improve their processors. Should you purchase a Ryzen laptop right now? Well, I have gone ahead and I'm going to name off a few comparisons between Intel's high performing processor and Ryzen's processors. And we're going to see which processor performs better. And if you're on a budget, you might lean towards Ryzen. But if you want the most performance, there may be a case where you're going to lean towards Intel. You might lean towards Ryzen. We're going to see. We're going to put these head to head. First processor I'm going to look at is the i7-9750H from Intel versus the Ryzen 73700U. The i7-9750H beats out that processor by 38% performance. So it's going to be on average about 38% faster than the Ryzen processor. Now we take the same processor from Intel, the i7-9750H versus Ryzen's 3750H. And it beats that one out by 27%. Okay, so again, Intel takes the cake. Ryzen, not too far behind, but a little bit behind nonetheless. Next, we take the previous iteration of Intel's top you know, gaming and creator laptop processor, the i7-8750H, and we put it up against the Ryzen 7 3700U. And that beats it out by 29%. So Intel still beating with an older generation processor is still beating one of Ryzen's more newer generation. All right, now let's take the processor I have right here in this Dell XPS 15. And you had the i7 7700HQ versus the Ryzen 7 3700U. Now the Intel beats it out by 8%. Okay, so we're getting closer there. We're getting a little bit closer on that processor competition. All right, now let's go ahead and grab the i5 9300H versus the Ryzen 7 3750H. Intel beats it out by 12%. Okay, so I hate to continue to like say Intel beats it, Intel beats it, Intel beats it, but that's what we're currently seeing right now. That 4000 series might come along and it totally kills these numbers and then Ryzen totally takes over. But right now you're asking, should you buy AMD or Intel? And where we're sitting right now, it, Intel is still the answer as far as performance is concerned. All right i7 10510U versus the Ryzen 3700U. Intel beats it out by 20%. All right, last one I'm going to do. The Intel i7 8565U versus Ryzen 7 3700U. Two pretty on par uh, processors here. Intel wins again. I, I hate to do this. I'm not like I'm like, yeah, Intel, yeah, Intel. I want to see Ryzen grow. I want to see Ryzen take off. 
Here's something that I want to talk to you about though. Okay, do you remember earlier when we were talking about my MacBook Pros and we saw from 2010 to 2015, we saw a 197% increase in performance. And then from 2015 to 2020, we saw a 114% increase in performance, seeing that they're slowly slacking off the performance increases. Okay, let's talk about Ryzen here. Ryzen, when they launched their 2017 Ryzen 2700U, it was on benchmark for the goal to beat out Intel in the mobile processor sector, okay? So it was good. It was a good processor. From 2017 to 2018, they had a 13% increase in power and performance. So from the Ryzen 2700U to the Ryzen 3700U, we saw a 13% increase in power. All right, now from 2018 to 2019, Ryzen came out with a 3780U. We saw a 10% increase in that processor, okay? So then we have 23% growth from entry, entry point in about two and a half to three years. Okay, so what is that saying about AMD? They are aggressively improving the performance of their processors compared to Intel. So what that tells me is you need to keep an eye out on AMD. Definitely, 100%. And it might, this might be the year, but we don't fully know that yet because not enough processors have hit the market. Not enough processors have come into my studio where I can test them and tell you for sure, yes, make the jump to Intel. And who knows when the processors are going to come out and come onto market with all the complications and craziness in the world happening right now. Productions have slowed down. Uh, we don't know if it's going to launch at the times that they allotted and predicted. So we might have to see. All right, I'm going to give you a current example of a laptop that has both the Intel i7 1065G7, which is a Intel mobile processor with discrete graphics built into the chip, versus Ryzen's 7 3780U processor. Two good processors, pretty on par with one another. But the Intel i7 chip is still roughly 15% faster than the Ryzen chip. Keep in mind that's Intel's 10th gen processor and Ryzen has yet to release their 4000 series. So with that in mind, if Ryzen can do at least a 25% increase from this processor, they're going to pass Intel in the category. So if you're willing to wait for the Ryzen, I think it's the 4800U, you might have a processor that's going to be faster than this Intel 1065G7. But that's only a guessing game. We only can tell in a matter of time. Tech enthusiasts predict a release of the new Ryzen 4000 series on the market when you can purchase them uh, late summer 2020. Uh, but we will still have to see if they can ramp up production amidst all this craziness happening with the sickness going around the world. We'll see what happens. But right now we're looking at a midsummer launch. So if you can wait till midsummer, then you know AMD might be the buy for you. But if you have to buy right now, Intel is still showing great promise for great performance for video editing, graphic design, and photography, basically all the creative professional fields. Intel is still has your back. You still can see great performance out of them. That's not saying that AMD is not going to blow it away in the next nine months to 18 months, but we'll have to find out. If you've enjoyed this, definitely subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. My name is Benjamin Kaiser. You've been watching this episode of Don't Tech With Me. Can't wait to see you back here tomorrow for some more tech news. I'll see you here on the next video.